Hi everybody, it is December 13, 2018. I'm starting with this article on this earthquake that took place, was it yesterday or two days ago? Tennessee, a 4.4. But it, this video is not about earthquakes and it's not about fires or floods. The reason for this video, I will say again, if you are still comfortable and have not suffered the consequences of the enormous evil taking place in this country, I hope that you are prepared to face that evil. Should you face oh, a quote unquote natural disaster, do you have enough savings to afford a hotel room? Do you have a place to go? If suddenly you are one day looking at the fact that you no longer have a home, do you have a place to live? Do you have the money to rent a place? Are you prepared to face your insurance company? and fight for a year just to get uh, what you deserve? Are you prepared to face the possibility of every government agency, insurance companies betraying you? If you're not prepared to meet that, then you may be able to hang on for a while, but if you don't have anyone at your back, you won't survive. Your quality of life will be far less than what you have ever experienced. And for most, that is their life. That becomes their life. They don't recover. Because most Americans now have very little savings and they are doing everything they possibly can to destroy our way of life, destroy our property, our homes. And I sure do hope that you have a big picture view of what is taking place in this country. It's unfortunate that we have Americans who are betraying us every single day. Their refusal to face the reality that we are at war. They are using weather as weapons. They refuse to do the research to find out that fires can be created. Earthquakes can be created, induced, flooding, raining for four days. They can create it all. They have been. There's plenty of evidence that our natural disasters are not caused by God, by Mother Nature, but caused by man. And because we have our fellow Americans betraying us. Their refusal to check out what's happening, their self-centeredness, their selfishness, more and more Americans are being destroyed. And yes, they are absolutely complicit with the destruction that is taking place. Are you prepared for an earthquake in the Midwest? So we have a 4.4 in Tennessee. And this article is reminding everybody that a big one, oh, not just California, you got the New Madrid. A big one, it's not if it comes, but when it comes. And in reading this, I thought to include it because do you have earthquake insurance? if you can survive a 7.7 .7 earthquake hitting 
the New Madrid. You can read this article. I highlighted it, but er anything west of I-65 in infrastructure would be severely damaged. Kentucky, Tennessee, um, all of these states would be affected. Indiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Alabama, Arkansas, Illinois, and Tennessee, Kentucky. When you have a 4.4 in Tennessee, and here they have science. Oh, uh, scientists have claimed that they've had hurricanes in this area for more than 4,000 years. You cannot believe anything that you read on mainstream media. Science has been taken over. We, we're, we are the country of fraud. We are the country of corruption. We're the people of the lie. And it's not just government agencies. And it's not just CEOs. It's the American people. We have and have had for a very, very long time a malignant sickness coursing through the American people. Oh, they claim they're so fabulous and principled and uh, they have these fabulous values and we are so morally superior and we're free and courageous people and we're not none of that. My God, these delusions are dangerous. You hold on to these delusions, and th those delusions also include, you know, Trump is making America great again, or Jesus is going to come back, and he's going to uh, make bad good again. And these delusions are killing people because these delusions keep people comfortable and allow them to never, ever do anything anything to change. And I'm sorry. We're seeing more and more people destroyed, killed in horrific ways. And I, I'm sorry, I just don't have this. Hey, well, let's just go on to the next event. Hey, let's check out what's happening with Trump, Pelosi, and Schumer. Let's check out what's happening with that wall. Let's watch that Washington, D.C. B movie that goes on endlessly. And let's not check out what's happening across the board. I want you to listen to just a minute of this. Let's start with the numbers. The campfire destroyed more than 18,000 structures. More than 13,000 were homes. Hard to say at this point how many of those homes were insured, but we do know Merced Property and Casualty was looking at nearly 64 million in liabilities from the fire. The problem, the company's assets were around 23 million, meaning they were in the red, about 40 million because of the campfire. According to the California Department of Insurance, the volume of claims associated with the catastrophic campfire overwhelmed the small insurer to the point of insolvency. Now the claims go to the California Insurance Guarantee Association. They pay claims when insurance companies go under. This is unique. The Office of Department of Insurance told us this doesn't happen often. In fact, they can't remember the last time something like this happened with an insurance company. They want to make sure everyone knows their claims are being taken care of, though. That was a big relief for this family when I talked to them this evening. Army veteran Greg Avila and his wife Jennifer, two girls Lizzie and Abby, lived off Wagoner Road. Their home was destroyed and now they are wondering what's going on with their claim as they live temporarily in Santa Rosa. Families like the Avillas are hoping this process will pick back up soon so they can get their insurance claim money to start over. Though we all know it's going to take some time. Yeah, it's going to take some time. So, so they can get their insurance. Um, don't, don't, when, when you hear someone tell you something, it doesn't matter who it is. You cannot count on what they are saying actually coming true. Now, this family, they don't know when they're going to 
have that relief that they feel manifest in reality, it could take a year. What's going to happen to this family in that year? Do they have do they have adequate savings to pull them through? I will tell you that most Americans do not. So, this Merced Insurance Company, insolvent, but I want you to see this. Okay, the company faces about $64 million in outstanding liabilities located in paradise. Their assets, $23 million. Oops, sorry, we can't pay out. We don't have enough money. Insolvent, goodbye. The next one sentence paragraph, the company had 200 policies in Butte County, but doesn't know how many people impacted by the fire held insurance with the company. Well, do you see how the two sentence, uh, two sentences don't make sense? Uh, in fact, they are, they counter the second sentence counters the first in $64 million in outstanding liabilities located in paradise. Next sentence, well, we have 200 policies in Butte County, but we don't know how many people uh, have been impacted by the fire. So how do you know you have $64 million in liability from paradise? Okay. The obvious gets really on my nerves to argue all the time and point out what Americans are reading. Uh, they should be able to get that something's wrong with these two sentences. And something may be wrong with Merced going bankrupt. Um, California Insurance Guarantee Associates will take over the claims. Well, this article, the association has maximum benefit limitations. So, those of you who had Merced to cover your claim, you've paid out the premiums to Merced. Oh, sorry. What, that product that you bought? Too bad. Uh, we just have decided that we can't pay out. How many times have Americans been betrayed? And at what point do Americans say enough? They band together in their communities and try to create something that will work for all of them that community of people saying to hell with these government officials, to hell with these insurance companies, we're going to come up with something on our own. But that, that means that you need your fellow Americans, you need your fellow Californians to work with you, to get rid of these state legislatures, these, these uh, uh, governors, these and th this applies to everybody in every state and every community. You've got to get rid of these people who are destroying you. And you can't do that alone. So that's why I feel like our greatest enemy, it's our fellow Americans who just don't give a shit about anything or who like their willful ignorance and proudly display it by insulting you. You know, you're going to see an awful lot of people in paradise. And I know that there have been claims that insurance companies were paying out immediately, which really surprised me to hear that. But most people have to fight like hell. And you know what I learned is that there are confidential confidentiality agreements insurance companies requiring of their customers to sign. 
when they settle cases or they go through uh, mediation or arbitration. They're having to sign confidentiality agreements that they don't speak out about what was taking place. So Americans don't know how many Americans are getting screwed by their insurance companies because they've been silenced by those agreements. Insurance board disasters needed but bankrupt. Okay, what is this? The rates for insurance policies are going up for homes in wild land, fire interface zones, likely almost everywhere, but certainly in California. Uh, if they keep experiencing losses like we saw this year and last year, they will not offer insurance in every situation. Uh, the insurance uh, alternative will be prohibitively expensive. They are going to get you out any which way. So if you're still living in your home and it hasn't been completely brought to dust by our natural, quote unquote, these natural fires, um, they're going to get you out. They're going to continue increasing your taxes. They will continue increasing your premiums for all insurance. They will continue with their rules and regulations until you finally get to that breaking point and you move into that urban area because you can't make it in the rural, rural areas. So for the average homeowner building a new home, they will first buy a piece of property. Then when it comes time to have insurance, they will get the surprise of a lifetime. Now, wildfires may soon be uninsurable risks for homeowners. Uh, homeowners in wildfire-prone areas of California and other western states now, you have another worry or two worries. Either you're going to face a very high deductible or having your home insurance canceled altogether. Fire losses exceeded $10 billion. Uh, second year running in California, the campfire alone has killed 86 people and damaged or destroyed nearly 20,000 homes. Well, I think the 20,000 figure, uh, the 14 plus thousands of homes destroyed, I think those are the 14,000 plus that have been leveled, dust leveled. 20,000 figure includes those homes damaged by the fire. Uh, risks that were once insurable will become uninsurable. Wildfires now graduating to the highest level of peril for insurers. They're going to react accordingly by running away, raising rates whenever possible, or inserting deductibles in a contract. So they pay out less, but the burden is going to hit the policy holders harder. And by the way, Merced, you know, going insolvent, if they are actually are, who then pays? What's that California um, insurance guarantee program? Where do they get their funds? From the taxpayers. So guess what? California taxpayers, you're going to be paying out for the claims that Merced was supposed to be paying out. Once again, the taxpayers are getting hit. And you should be furious that this is taking place. Uh, insurance agency informed a homeowner earlier this year, one that lived in Woodland Hills, California, they were adding a 20% wildfire deductible. Why? Because they found out that that homeowner hadn't cleared brush 150 feet from their house. They have insurance spies going around. And if you, if they spot that you've not cleared that brush around your home sufficiently, they're going to increase your premiums or hand you a high deductible. You see, this Agenda 2030, the rules and regulations, Many people think it's coming. It's here. And many of those rules and regulations already are being enforced. 
You've got insurance spies going around, checking out your property. If they see something, you're going to get to know when you receive that letter from your insurance company telling you you have to pay more. Allstate, which is the second largest home insurer, uh, on their website stated that some policies may exclude coverage for wildfire. Um, coverage is going to vary by location, by policy. Farmers, homeowners insurance, they said they're limiting liability for wildfire smoke, soot, char, ash, odor, damage. Will more restrictions uh, take place in the future? Of course. But here, here, it won't affect all 40 million Californians such as those who live in urban areas. It will affect you guys with that wildlife urban interface. You know, where your home has trees around it and brush. The hilly areas, the areas like Paradise, Chico. You guys are going to be hit with very high premiums, high deductibles, or your home insurance canceled or fire insurance canceled. Uh, one insurance solution is simply abandoned areas that have already seen major fire like Paradise or Ventura County where the Woolsey fire destroyed 2,000 homes and that took place at the exact same time and that should really beg questions. How is it that we are having such destructive fires taking place in Southern and Northern California at the exact same time? Oh, it's climate change because mainstream media told me that. The TV told me it's climate change. And my governor, Moonbeam, my crazy psychopathic governor, told me. So I'm going to believe it. It's infuriating. It's dangerous, these beliefs that people have. And you know what? These beliefs, they maintain them because they are selfish, self-centered. I just want to live my comfortable life. So I'm going to believe all of the lies because it works for me. So insurance companies are required to insure for another uh, year. They're required. That's state law. So all of you in paradise, your insurance companies will renew your policy for one year when you don't even have a home. But after that year, look forward to being canceled, which will throw hundreds of thousands. And it, yeah, after the cancellations come up for the fires last year, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of Californians onto the state's fair plan, a last resort insurance vehicle for the uninsurable. Or you could get insurance from a carrier outside the state of California, but if they go bankrupt, the California insurance guarantee, they won't, they won't step in. You're screwed. Um, here, they're also likely to insist that anyone in a fire prone area such as Hidden Valley Lake, California, join with neighbors in a community cleanup effort to remove brush from their surroundings. We clean our lots by June 15. The homeowners association checks and if not, they hire someone and charge the homeowner. Okay, so you have home in uh, home associations. You've got insurance companies who are enforcing the rules and regulations that are 
those Agenda 2030 rules and regulations? Do they know that they are enforcing these rules and regulations dictated by the United Nations? No. But that is what is taking place. When you believe lies and refuse to do any research to find out what really is taking place, you end up being someone who destroys other people in the process. Because you thinking that this is climate change, the next deliberate fire that destroys thousands of your fellow Californians, um, you allow insurance companies to do whatever the hell they want to do, home owner associations, the boards of those associations, do whatever the hell they want to do, instead of all of you uniting to fight against all of these people who are speaking the lies and implementing what the United Nations dictates. And if you would only do the research, you would find out that what you are hearing me say, what you are hearing your community members who actually understand what's happening in this country say, you would know that they are speaking the truth. But no, chronic climate climate change risk is the creeping change that worries all companies. Yes, this was stated by Greg Lowe, the global head of resilience at Aon. We are getting so destroyed and it is Well, all I can tell you is that when you realize how difficult it is to get back on your feet, when you have so many external forces working to keep you destroyed, you will never understand what people go through. But you could be next. So Congress, yeah, extending flood insurance program for one week. This goes on every single year. Oh, uh, Congress has to do these emergency extensions for FEMA, the National Flood Insurance Program. Um, Houston, we have a problem. Insurance companies that won't pay. Well, this was back in uh, September 2017. People are experiencing a nightmare because their insurance companies are not paying. Well, remember what happened Superstorm Sandy, wide scale fraud, where the original damage reports, inspectors went out to damage people's property, their homes, the damage caused by Superstorm Sandy. They brought those reports back to the insurance companies, and the insurance companies made their fraudulent changes and denied people coverage. What happened? They had to take their insurance companies to court. We all know how long lawsuits are. <clears throat> they could go on for years. The insurance companies, people still don't understand. They go to insurance companies, they get flood insurance, they have these private companies with their uh, uh, claims adjuster or whatever. Uh, they think they think that they have private flood insurance. They don't. It's under the National Flood Insurance Program, FEMA. Insurance companies, they take your premium. They hold on to a third of that premium, send two-thirds to FEMA. All expenses paid by FEMA, the expenses incurred, by the insurance company, all of it paid by FEMA. If they have to go to court, if a customer brings their insurance company, files a lawsuit against them, FEMA pays the attorneys and the court fees and expenses. FEMA. Your insurance company doesn't tell you that. 
and the fraud that is taking place between private insurance companies and FEMA just with this national flood insurance program is so disgusting. No, we are not morally superior here. So private insurance, they're not on the hook for the losses. Um, but the only way to protect yourself is to organize with your fellow community members. And that's exactly what this article is saying. Um, but the fact that insurance companies are not paying and then you read Texas regulators need to encourage homeowners to file complaints with the insurance department when they don't get the service they expect from their insurance company. Um, you, everybody needs to be taking into their own hands their life and stop counting on any of these companies or government officials to help you. So many valid lawsuits are settled in arbitration or mediation. Part of the settlement includes mandatory confidentiality agreements. These confidentiality agreements serve to prevent consumers from hearing the true stories of how these large corporations treat the average citizen when there's money at stake. So the consumers, they have been silenced by signing those agreements. And that means they don't have the power to organize, to tell their stories, or to fight back. Nothing. And many are not getting what they deserve from insurance companies. But when you sign that confidentiality agreement, that's it. You don't say anything because if you do speak out, that insurance company is then going to sue you and then they're going to take back everything, the little piddling amount that you got. So it's like uh, all over the country, we've got Americans who live fear just trying to survive. So Texas to be hit with new insurance law, making it harder to win contested claims. I will link below to everything, but the new law decreases the chances that an insurance company will be forced to pay claim delay penalties and plaintiff attorney fees. Now, I don't know if this actually happened. Somebody else can do the research, but that you have your regulators passing laws that hurt you and help insurance companies, it should outrage every Texan, but understand that governments, insurance companies, they all work together. They do not represent you. And many are representing the United Nations. As unbelievable as that sounds, as crazy as that sounds, if you would just do the friggin' research, you would find out that we have a reshaping of the United States taking place and it is under the dictates. It is from the dictates of the United Nations Agenda 2030. So, uh, if this law actually went through, then many will be less likely to pursue legal action because they don't have the money for attorneys. And then insurance companies, uh, uh, your state regulators or state legislature, they're actually going to say to insurance companies, now you don't even have to pay any penalties for delays on claims? Well, that's under, well, we have so many disasters and so thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. Of course, insurance companies will, you know, it, it's just because everything takes so long.
the delays of having to pay out so many claims. Insurance companies shouldn't be hurt by that. So hurt the consumer. Under the new regulations, insurance companies will enjoy greater freedoms to push back on insurance claims, and the first wave of such claimants are likely to come from areas impacted by Harvey. Um, and when insurance companies have the freedom to delay claims as long as they want because they're not going to be hit with any penalties, who's going to be hurt by that? The consumer, the person who absolutely desperately needs the insurance company to pay, but the insurance company doesn't care anymore. Yeah, it gives them an awful lot of power. Look, you know, flood insurance in, uh, is going up all over the place. Um, FEMA's National Flood Insurance Program announced rate hikes this month, and this was April 13, 2018. Um, and, oh, the hikes, because you're not in a flood zone, don't think you ain't getting a hike on just your home insurance. Because you will see that every state all over the country, homeowners insurance, not related to floods or fire, just generally speaking, are increasing, skyrocketing in some areas due to the frequency and severity of natural disasters. You want to believe lies? It hurts everybody. These are the rate differences. Oklahoma, uh, $825 increase. These are all the increases that people are paying. Kansas, 627. Colorado, 557. Um, Texas, 543. South Carolina, 476. California, your increase is only 61. Because you already pay. It's so high. Your premiums. The biggest culprit in the increase is bad weather. So we all get screwed in the process. Because our fellow Americans love their lies. The, uh, this is really, I'm going to end with this. I know it's long. I'm sorry, but this is just what it is. Uh, premiums on new and renewed policies will increase by 8%. Is that it? No. Um, the highest increases will be on, well, wait, largest rate hikes will affect federally subsidized flood policies which make up 20% of all national flood insurance program policies. Um, but you will see that other types of policies will have an increase of 25% annually. 25%. Okay. The highest of those increases are on non-primary residential properties. If you have a second home, you're going to face increases. Business properties, severe repetitive loss properties, substantially damaged or improved properties. Um, they are going to destroy you any which way they can. That's a given. It's a given. You may still have your home, but you're going to be squeezed out because you're going to be finding your taxes going up all of the time, your insurance going up all of the time, the rules and regulations. Oh, if you have not cleared that brush 150 feet from your home and you just haven't gotten it in time, that insurance spy sees it. You get that letter. Now you're paying a high deductible. Now you're paying a, a, a higher premium. And people really think that Americans aren't doing this to one another. 
All right. Um, we have to change. If we don't change, all of this continues. And more and more people will absolutely, 100%, get destroyed.